Columbus Blue Jackets sniper Patrick Lanay is now out of the player's assistance program and available for trade. But is there any way the Islanders could afford him? We're going to discuss that and a lot more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to the Monday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. You get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As the playoffs are in our rearview mirror in the NHL and the NBA, the sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. We've got a lot to get to on today's show. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic, you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, email us at LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever's on your mind. You can also follow the show on X at Locked On Isles, and you can follow me, Gil Martin, on X at Ice Wars, NYR, VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all things Islanders all year long during the offseason. That's hirings, firings, trade rumors, free agency, and the draft. And it's always great to talk a little Islanders hockey with you, game time, or any time. So, some news breaking kind of late last week and over the weekend that I think is relevant to the New York Islanders. And we'll see how relevant in the future. But Patrick Lanay, the disgruntled, sniper of the Columbus Blue Jackets out of the NHL player assistance program. He entered the program last season in the middle of the season uh, for unspecified mental health reasons. And now he is out of that program. Also, we know that Lane has basically asked for a trade out of Columbus, wanting to get a fresh start. We also know that Lou Lamorello likes to add goal scorers. If you go back and look at some of the acquisitions he made for the New Jersey Devils during his tenure as GM there, some of the moves he made when he was with the Toronto Maple Leafs, if you can add a dynamic goal scorer, you know, here's here's the way Lou Lamorello tends to want to build his teams. He starts with, a, with the best goalie he could find. Then he builds up the defense. He wants a couple, one really good offensive defenseman at least. And then, you know, adding to the grinders and the physical forwards that he likes, he'll try to get one or two snipers uh, to be added to his roster. And it worked very well in New Jersey, for sure. Got him, uh, you know, more than one Stanley Cup, as we know. And again, it hasn't always worked, uh, you know, but, you know, adding an Alexander Mogilny, for example, as he did with the Devils, you know, that's the kind of move that can certainly help uh, give your team that sniper. And the Islanders don't have a legitimate bona fide sniper. I mean, I would say Brock Nelson, who over the last three years, in each of the last three years, has led the Islanders in goals. He is sort of the next level down from a sniper. He's a reliable, good consistent offensive forward, but he's not that guy that every time he's on the ice, the fans are holding their breath when the puck is on his stick, and the opposition says, you know what, if we want to beat the Islanders, 
we know we have to shut down Brock Nelson. It's not quite at that level. The same way that, you know, you have to slow down Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl if you're facing Edmonton. Uh, you don't have a player on that level with the Islanders offensively right now. And Anthony Duclair, given the Islanders' budget constraints, uh, and Maxim Siplakov, these were smart, well-designed pickups that kept the Islanders, you know, within their limited amount of cap space available. But they do not move the needle with regard to, okay, I'll rephrase it. They do not give the Islanders an elite sniper. They can improve the team. I think on paper they did improve the team, but they don't take the Islanders from 22nd in the league in goals scored to even top half. Maybe they get them closer. Maybe they get them to from 22 to 18 or 17, but they're not going to get them into the top 10 or 12 where you kind of want to be. And, you know, they'll help the power play most likely, but, you know, not the same way that a guy like Patrick Lane, if he stays healthy, will do for you. And Lane, what does he add? He's six foot five, 205 pounds. So he's not a small guy that, you know, he may not be the most physical guy. I'm not going to say he's, you know, making his living with crushing body checks, but the size does make him more difficult for defenders to knock him off the puck. And you're getting goal scoring. You are getting a guy who, you know, essentially is capable of giving you 30 goals or more, has a career high of 44 goals, actually led, and this I think is is kind of important from an Islanders perspective, led the NHL in power play goals with 20 back in 2017, 2018 with Winnipeg. And that he was only 19 years old that season, had 15 the following year. Uh, Here's a guy who is certainly capable of being a difference maker. And he's done that on some fairly, you know, mediocre hockey teams. He started his NHL career in Winnipeg, then played for Columbus. Nobody is mistaking, for example, the Blue Jackets over the last few seasons as uh, a team that put fear in the heart of opposing teams. In fact, Lane has not played in the playoffs since 2020. So, it, you know, his teams have struggled, to say the least, in recent seasons. And he's not the, the, the best defensive player in the league, which means he will sort of be the kind of guy that, you know, may not fit in exactly the way Patrick Waugh wants him to play. Uh, and the way the Islanders prefer to have people play. But he is a guy that when his head is on right and he's healthy and he's in the lineup, he is certainly capable of scoring a lot of goals. And, you know, he is the kind of guy who opposing teams do need to account for. Now, he is available. He has demanded a trade out of Columbus. Uh, if you want to hear a little bit more about that, I did uh, on Locked On NHL on Monday, today. I did interview the host of Locked On Blue Jackets, uh, Jay Forster, to talk about that. And he basically said that he thinks there's a 75% chance that he is traded off the Blue Jackets before the season starts. And, you know, again, you, you want a little more detail, a little more about where Lane is at and where the Blue Jackets are at in regard to him. Go to see Locked on NHL and watch that interview. And, and we talked a lot about that. So he's available. He's talented. He's still young, believe it or not, for a guy who's been in the league since 2016, 2017, second overall pick in the 2016 draft. The, the Finnish defense uh, forward, rather, is only 26 years old, 
won't turn 27 until April 19th of next year, which, you know, roughly when the season ends and the playoffs start. So he's still got some good years ahead of him. And yet there's a lot of obstacles for the New York Islanders to try to acquire Lane. Before, when he was in the Players Assistance Program, there was no way they could even talk to his agent or talk to, really, the Blue Jackets about a trade. But now that he's out of the Players Assistance Program, according to The Athletic, he is now available and, you know, maybe the Islanders could make a push. But there are a lot of obstacles in the way as far as bringing him to Long Island. We're going to talk about what it'll take, what the Blue Jackets are looking for, and how the Islanders might be able to fit him under the salary cap. We've got all that and a lot more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much I never want them to stop. Well, the NHL and NBA playoffs are over, so we get fewer games. But you know what? I still love baseball, and certainly you've got the summer games in Paris going on. So with all that, there are still things to bet on. And FanDuel, they let me keep sports going all the time whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers, not just new customers, all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Met fan, Yankee fan, check out the odds for them to make the playoffs, win any game, win their division, all of those things you could get odds for at FanDuel. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. That's FanDuel.com. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the obstacles to Lanay. Let's start with the most obvious, money. His current cap hit is $8.7 million, and he's got a couple of years left this year and next year on his contract. We all know that if you include Oliver Wallstrom, the Islanders are currently above the salary cap right now. Now you're allowed to be up to... 10% uh, above the cap during the offseason. Right now, the Islanders are above the cap, and that's obviously not where you want to be. Got to make a move in some way or only have 22 players instead of 23 on your NHL roster to do that. How do the Islanders fit $8.7 million for the next two years into their cap situation. And remember, you have Alexander Romanov, Brock Nelson, and Noah Dobson all slated next offseason to be unrestricted free agents. Oh, and Kyle Palmieri as well. So obviously it's uh, you know not quite that easy to figure this out. The first thing that the Islanders would need to do realistically you know you you whether you're trading away and I'm using JG Pajot as an example because he's been rumored for more than a year now to be the guy they would look to trade if they were going to do that Pajot would take only 5 million off the cap not enough not enough maybe you throw in an Oliver Wallstrom into a deal still not going to get you where you need to go so you're going to need one of two things to happen. You're either going to need the Blue Jackets to retain some salary or and or 
some combination of that, or you're going to need a third team with a lot of cap space to be involved in the trade and to retain the salary for them. Now, again, all of these things can be worked out, but it's a question of what you're going to give up. So if you're giving up Oliver Wallstrom and J.G. Pajot as part of the deal, maybe that makes sense for the Islanders, but it's not exactly what the Blue Jackets are looking for. And again, if you watch the interview on Locked On NHL with uh, Jay Forster of Locked On Blue Jackets, Columbus is looking more for draft picks and prospects. The Islanders don't have a lot of highly rated prospects. I would not in a million years advocate that the Islanders trade Cole Iserman, for example, as part of any deal to get Patrick Lane. That is not what the Islanders should do in a million years. You do have your first round pick in 2025, 2026, 2027. You already have traded your second round pick in 2026, but all other picks as of right now in the next three drafts are still available. Would the Blue Jackets be interested in an Isaiah George or in, uh, you know, some of the other prospects that the Islanders have that are a couple of years away, whether it's a Matt Maggio and Alex Jeffries, uh, a, a, a Jesse Polkinen. You know, there are some guys out there who you would still think teams might be interested in, but it would have to be a first round pick, maybe Oliver Wallstrom, a couple of those prospects for Lane, and then either, like I said, the Blue Jackets would have to take on some salary, uh, you know, retain some salary, or a third team would have to be involved in the deal in order to get that, you know, take some more of the salary so that all three teams can get benefits. Obviously, you also take into consideration that the Blue Jackets are less likely, all things being equal, to trade Lane within the division. So it, there are a lot of obstacles, let's put it that way, for the New York Islanders if they're going to be able to acquire Patrick Lane in particular and really any other high-priced sniper-type player. You got to free up that cap space. And it will not be easy because the guys who you want to trade, guys like Anders Lee or, or J.G. Pajot, uh, are not the kind of guys that other teams are necessarily looking at because of their bad salary situation or their bad value situation. You have guys with no trade clauses like Adam Pellick and Ryan Pollock, who, again, Lou probably doesn't want to trade anyway and you know that they're not going to want to deal brock nelson or kyle palmieri uh mainly because those are you know two of your top three or four offensive players on the current roster and to trade them away to get lane probably doesn't make a lot of sense so there are obstacles as far as making this a reality but you can't completely say it's impossible because we know Lou Lamarello A, needs another top six forward. B, loves to add those snipers to his mostly defensive-oriented team historically. And C, you want to help the goal scoring. You want to help the power play. Can you imagine uh, a, a, a top line of Horvat and uh, Barzal and Duclair? And then a second line of Nelson, Lane, and Palmieri. Uh, that would be a really strong top six. Again, if Patrick Lane is healthy on the ice and his attitude is good. And from all indications, now that he's out of the player assistance program, his uh, mental health is significantly better and Regardless of where he plays, we want that to be the case. But as of right now, 
some real obstacles involved, but it's something we are going to keep an eye on and any other moves that Lou Lamorella will make because before October 10th, when the Islanders season opens up, they have got to find a way to get under the cap and hopefully to improve this team. It may not happen until the trade deadline. We'll see, but one step at a time. Now, Lane out of the Players Assistance Program and available, so we'll see where he goes and whether the Islanders will be players in this situation. We have got more to get to on today's show. The Athletic did a recent article about basically which teams are using their cap money most efficiently. We'll talk about where the Islanders ranked. And oh, yes, for our Islanders birthday of the day, this one should be an easy one. Uh, A former goaltender who became GM of the Islanders. Let's see if you can guess who that is. Uh, I think it's easy. We've got all that and a lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available in the free Fire TV channels app. So I mentioned the athletic and their rankings, and these are always interesting. And obviously you have to take them with a grain of salt. They set up uh, criteria and then fill in where every team is. So basically what the uh, article did, they took a, put a dollar figure on every player who is not uh, on an entry level contract and compared it basically to, you know, their value versus what they're getting paid. And again, this is something that can change, you know, essentially next year, you could have a player have a breakout season and, and all of a sudden all bets are off and the value goes way up or a player slumps or gets injured and you're not getting the same value. But during the off season, They ranked all the teams, and out of 32 teams in the National Hockey League, the Islanders ranked 23rd, and they gave all the players uh, on the roster a grade between A and D. Uh, Haven't seen too many Fs out there, but for the Islanders, at least, it was between A and D, and these were interesting. Uh, Only one A on the roster, and that was Noah Dobson, who really had a surplus value of about $7.3 million. According to the model, he was worth $11.3 million based on what he did during the year. Uh, A couple of Ds on the roster for the Islanders, Ryan Polak. And Scott Mayfield. Now, Mayfield, as you know, was hurt. So he certainly has an easy chance to improve that. Pollock also hurt. But both of those guys graded out very poorly. Ironically, two B pluses, Ilya Sorokin and Anthony Duclair, who, you know, we talked about the value of that contract. B minuses for Brock Nelson, Hudson Fashing, and Kyle McClain. On the forward group, Mike Riley and Alexander Romanov on the defense group. And then most players in the C range, C pluses for Kyle Palmieri, Simon Holmstrom, Julian Gauthier, Matthew Barzal, and Samuel Bolduc. Cs for uh, Pierre Engvall and Adam Pellick. And then C minuses for Casey Sezikis, J.G. Pajot, Bo Horvat, and Anders Lee. So... Overall, the Islanders ranked 23rd. Now, if it makes you feel any better, the division rival Flyers were 25th. The Capitals were 28th. And the Blue Jackets were dead last at 32. So the Islanders actually ranking 5th in the Metropolitan Division in 
this category. No surprise that the two Stanley Cup finalists last year uh, were one and two in the league. Carolina ranked fourth. The Rangers were sixth uh, in the NHL. And the Devils coming in at the nine spot. So they ranked ahead of the Islanders within the division. And, you know, overall, the Islanders below average. And uh, that's not a surprise. Pittsburgh, by the way, just one spot ahead of the Islanders coming in at 22nd. And again, that also has to do with some of the moves made by every team over the course of the offseason. So, you know, without the Duclair contract, the Islanders would probably have dropped even lower. And again, it's something we've talked about in a lot of different ways. Every day or no, we've talked about the value or the lack of value that Lula Amarello has gotten from a lot of his contracts. This, you know, numerical, mathematical-based formula kind of backs that up. So Islanders ranking uh, 23rd in the NHL, according to the Athletic, in contract value. And hopefully next year, they climb the table, whether it's due to trades, better performance, probably a combination thereof. But uh, the Athletic does this all the time in the offseason, and we'll see how it plays out this season. But 23rd during the offseason. Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. I think it's obvious who it is. But uh, basically, Sunday was the 55th birthday of former Islanders goalie and GM Garth Snow, the Rentham, Massachusetts native, gra- drafted by the Quebec Nordiques in the sixth round back in 1987, spent four years at the University of Maine, and made his NHL debut during the 93-94 season for Quebec, then played for the Flyers, the Canucks, the Penguins, and joined the Islanders in 2001-2002, stayed with the team through the 05-06 season, and then <laughs> retired to become general manager in his NHL career, 368 games, uh, a 2.80 goals against and a 901 save percentage. He played 43 games in 2002, 2003 for the Isles had a 231 goals against average that year and a 918 save percentage by far his best year in between the pipes for the Isles. And as a GM, you know, he didn't always have a lot of money to work with. But I think if you look at the reasons for the team's success in the playoffs, most of the players uh, who were a part of that long playoff run in 2020 and 2021 were Garth Snow draft picks and acquisitions. One of Snow's better games with the Islanders, April 6, 2003, Islanders visiting the Carolina Hurricanes. Garth Snow, the goalie for the Islanders, Arters Urbe. The goalie for Carolina and the Islanders take a 2-0 lead. They get a 1-0 lead just a minute and a half into the game on a goal by Aaron Asham, Justin Papineau, and Oleg Kavasha, the assist. And then Radek Martinek scores late in the second period to make it 2-0. Mark Parrish and Yanni Minima with the helpers. Uh, Ryan Beta gets Carolina to within one with a third period goal, but that's all she wrote. The Islanders end up with a 2-1 to road win over Carolina, despite being outshot 45-14 to in this game. Uh, eight shots on goal for Kevin Adams, seven for Jeff O'Neill, six for Ron Francis, but 44 saves for Garth Snow as the Islanders pull off the upset. Garth Snow, 6'3", 200, pretty good size for a goalie in the 90s and early 2000s, and by the way, a very, very classy and nice guy. Garth Snow is our Islanders' birthday of the day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day, every day. We're back Wednesday, so it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule from now until September, uh, probably mid-September, but If any big news breaks, if a trade is made, if a player is signed, we'll do a a, a show as soon as possible after the news breaks. So, you know, again, 
watch for that and I'll update everyone on X or Twitter uh, to let them know when that is the case. But we'll be back Wednesday with the latest Islanders news notes and happenings. And again, throughout the off season, we will start breaking down some scouting reports on Islanders draft picks from this year as well. Until next time, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.